Thor. Tony, check it out. At once. Try to keep up. Marvel's Avengers clearly wants to be many things to many people. You can see that in the A-Day opening, where it gives you a brief tour of what each of Earth's mightiest heroes will eventually be able to do. From Hulk's rampaging, to Iron Man's graceful gliding. Then there's the menus, which are overflowing with the sorts of stats that Destiny fans have become accustomed to. With character and power levels, gear that can be upgraded, and percentage point bonuses. The question the upcoming beta poses is simple. Does Marvel Avengers manage to successfully thread the needle between stats and spectacle? After the A-Day intro, the beta starts to show off levels we haven't seen before, thrusting you into the soon-to-be-ripped chinos of Bruce Banner. Bruce, who, with Kamala Khan, is on the hunt for Tony Stark, which sees the pair infiltrating an AIM facility hidden in the Verdant Forest in the hopes of finding a backup of Jarvis. As you can imagine, it's not long before we get the chance to really test out the game's combat. And for Hulk, that includes grabbing enemies into his palm, as well as being able to rip chunks from the ground and hurl them at his foes. Initially, there's a lot of uncomplicated fun to be had in the green wrecking ball. But we'll circle back to that later. It's also in this mission where the game's Naughty Dog influence is felt most. After all, it's hardly the first time a Troy Baker voiced character has guided a teenager through a forest in recent months now, is it? But more importantly, it's in the pacing. After starting the mission as Hulk, we're then put into Kamala Khan, aka Miss Marvel's, stretchy shoes, and the game starts to find its voice. Kamala's got a wide-eyed buoyancy that is infectious, and the single-player mission does well to give you moments where you're fighting through waves of goons, and then drops the pace so you can spend a little bit of time with her. It's fair to say that putting the spotlight on Kamala is a shrewd move. Her powers, being able to shapeshift her body like a Stretch Armstrong, lead to some of the most impressive moments in my time during the beta. She swings her arms in a way that allows you to whip through crowds or create giant fists that can come smashing down into people. This type of combat might not be revolutionary. You can expect a lot of combos that rely on mixing up light and heavy attacks, but it offers some pleasingly effortless spectacle. The longer I spent with the beta, however, the clearer it became that the combat offerings of each of the various heroes isn't nearly as diverse as I expected it to be. Miss Marvel, Hulk, Black Widow all have differences, but none are so pronounced that it feels like I have to change the way I play. There's the now obligatory powers mapped to L1, R1 and L1 and R1 together, and these do offer up some noticeable differences between the heroes. For instance, Black Widow's iconic power allows her to briefly turn herself and allies invisible, whereas Kamala Khan's is to turn herself into a giant, greatly increasing the damage she does. Of course, another major part of the beta is the Destiny-esque looting and gearing of the game. Each character has a power level alongside a character level, which are both upgraded independently of each other. Your character level is tied into the skills you can unlock for your characters, such as new attacks, while the power level is dictated by the gear you obtain. The better the gear, the higher your level, and you can upgrade your gear with resources that you can find in levels or by dismantling old gear that you find. And look, if you're exhausted hearing that, then this might not be the game for you. Add on the fact that you need to level up each hero individually, and it's clear that this is another live service game that wants to be the only thing you play. But, like any multiplayer game, the addition of mates does help inject some fun into proceedings, and it's clearly where you'll spend most of your time once the main story campaign is wrapped up. The beta gives you a few different types of missions to try, from the harm challenge rooms, which sees you take on waves of enemies, shorter drop zone missions, which take around 5-10 to 10 minutes to complete and focus on a single objective, or longer war zone missions, which have multiple objectives and are closer in style to a destiny strike. The mix of mission types means there's a few bits of surface variety, but in truth, the majority of them focus on you moving to an area, working over a group of enemies, and then moving on to the next one. So far, no objectives really felt like we need to think about each hero's individual abilities, such as Iron Man's ability to fly or Kamala's elastic limbs, which makes sense if you decide to tackle the missions with AI companions, who, to be fair, are pretty intelligent, but it means that each level we face ends up not requiring too much thought. Hopefully the final game will offer some hero specific puzzles, especially considering the iconic missions in the game will put the focus on a particular hero. Despite both the shortcomings and promises, it's still hard to see if Marvel's Avengers can achieve its truly lofty ambitions. In its weaker moments, it's hard not to think that focusing on a single element, like simplifying the loot or adding more concrete differences to the combat, could make for a better moment to moment experience. 
Likewise, is this the game for players of Destiny who want to swap Bungie's shooter for a Marvel-flavoured world, or MCU fans who want to fill the space between films with a different type of comic book wish fulfilment? If Crystal Dynamics can figure out how to smooth off some of the more noticeable joins, then it might just appeal to both audiences. Come <laughs> on!